The importance of accessing network data really can't be understated. It's almost fundamental. Uh, in the past, uh, access to data has been hampered and was not always, it was always a bit of a laborious and inefficient process, um, often very poll based. Um, I think things are changing now. They almost have to. Bruce, how does the right network operating system architecture change this approach in the context of providing, let's say, streaming telemetry or, or analytics? Mm. Yeah, I mean, you kind of hit the nail on the head there, right? The concept of streaming telemetry. It's a, it's a term we all know and love in this industry, but it's worth breaking down what it actually means, right? Like fun, fundamentally, what does streaming telemetry mean? Um, I think the biggest shift, and, and again, you kind of hit it on the head with your, your line of questioning, is around the move from a, a poll-based architecture, which is when you have a controller that's constantly reaching out and retrieving the last current state of uh, some, some object on, an, on a network element, and moving that to a model where your controller stays in sync based on some asynchronous notification of things changing. So, you know, GNMI uh, is kind of the, the framework in which this exists in the networking world today, uh, specifically that last part, uh, the, the, what we call on-change telemetry. And there's a few things you, you, you gain by, by doing this approach. One is it actually helps you scale much, much better because you can imagine if I have, uh, again, let's go to the edge cloud uh, example. You have a thousand edge clouds all with, I don't know, four switches, some spines, maybe a DC gateway, something like that. In a poll based architecture, your controller has to hit every single one of those network elements, let's say every 10 minutes. And even then you're 10 minutes behind, right? That's the, that's the, the side effect of the, this kind of rear view monitoring approach. And your controller doesn't know if the fields have changed. So it has to blindly retrieve everything. So you're dealing with a big data problem. The more you scale this up, the more insight you want to get, the more fields you want to touch, the more fields you want to store. Streaming telemetry is not only just the efficient packing of bits on the wire using protobuf encoding, but it's also uh, the idea that you're embedding logic in the network element itself on, uh, I'm going to tell you when something changes. So, you know, you subscribe to a specific path, let's say interface operational state, um, rather than having the controller query interface operational state every 10 minutes or, or, or whatever, you can have the network element tell the, uh, the, the controller that it has potentially changed. Now, I'm sure there's some critics that are going to listen to this and say, well, that's just SNMP traps, right? <laughs> and yeah, it, it kind of is. But the benefit of doing this uh, when you accompany it with uh, the concept of modeling your schema is you can get these you know, SNMP traps for any path in the system, you know, a statistic, a counter, an operational state, uh, the, the state of a route, whatever it may be, the controller has access to that information on change. So I think that's kind of the main philosophy around streaming telemetry. Um, where it can start to be interesting in the context of everything we're talking about today is the whole concept of closed loop validation, which again, is not a new term. Um, I like to think of intent actually as being kind of an accelerated form of closed loop automation and that you're going to set some configuration on the device. You're going to constantly monitor that configuration to make sure that it, it stays set. You know, if someone comes in and changes that config, your intent is no longer being met or it may no longer being met. So you should notify the end user. So streaming telemetry lets you get that kind of deviation like behavior. I think uh, when we start to see intent and closed loop automation become more interesting is when you start incorporating state and health into the state of that intent. I mean, uh, you know, an intent may have a desire that all sub interfaces are up because this is a critical infrastructure service and they should never go down. You can actually model that and stream it out of the box using streaming telemetry, you know, distill, boil up, if you will, that information into the intent itself and then display that in a nicely packaged form to an end user without having fine grain granular access to information with asynchronous notifications when this information changes, you can still stay in, stay in sync, but you can't scale as well. And certainly you're not getting updates as and when they happen. So, you know, if you do have automatic remediations in place, which is kind of the, the next step where you incorporate AI and try to actually fix things that go wrong, um, your mean time to resolve something or your mean time to innocence in some cases, uh, can be much higher um, if you aren't using streaming telemetry and you're polling the network. So yeah, I think there's a scale angle and you know these distributed clouds are only gonna uh, add a linchpin to that scale angle, angle I think. Um, and the fact that without streaming telemetry, without the ability to actually figure out the current state that configures and the current state 
the service is in, it's very tricky to do proper kind of declarative intent based uh, management of the network, which uh, is where we essentially want to be. So yeah, I think it's, it's absolutely fundamental. I think I'm mean, just picking up on a couple of the of lines of the points that you're you're focused on, Bruce. Here, uh, one of the things that I think that's that's really important to take away from the conversation is that is that this is not yesterday's mode of operation. This is a mode of operation that's for now, moving forward, and it's different. Um, and and it 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 is better. You know, it has it has material advantages of as you've been describing, and and so I I think. I think really reflecting on that, you know, from an, you know, when you're getting ready to design your operations environment or, you know, for new applications and services is, is, is a really good piece of soul searching to do and, and really, really reflect on what, what you're trying to accomplish from a, a, a operational awareness perspective. Um, and this, this kind of points out that part of it starts right on right in the node right? Mm -hmm. right at you know right on the port and uh looking at various aspects of operations that want to get get shared by the same token uh picking up on the the cloud native design um framework that we've been talking about the you know the whole business of what how do you collect the information how do you you know how do you um uh, uh, aggregate uh, the data that you you want for different you know on different filters um, you know to look at relative to intent um, uh, you know I, I think that this the idea that um, the intent of the service delivery can be coded into the operation from the start um, from you know the, the point where you create the configuration to the point that you're monitoring it and say there, you know, there's a deviation because there's been a change of this type, uh, and then managing, you know, sort of directing the the processing of the of the observations uh, in, you know, at at an acquisition layer for analytics, um, you know, as a as a pool of of uh, um, uh, lenses that you want to apply to to the operation. It, it just underscores more the sort of the, the whole life cycle aspect of um, what what is the value of using this design paradigm and the set of the new set of techniques um, that's involved in letting you understand better uh, how closely you're coming to achieving your intent. Um, then you can get into the you know having having done the analysis for performance or availability or you know application patterns and so forth. You know there are different different aspects to look at, you can then also control the extent to which you want to close loops or run as partially open loops or, you know, in, in which way do you want to fork the information that um, that suits your need, but the flexibility is there um, in line with your, 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 your intent from the start. Um, and to the general theme of the conversation, that is, that is a very powerful change um, mm -hmm. from how things have been. So, yeah, I, I see that very similarly.